three rulers of Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso have signed a mutual defense pact. The Alliance of Sahel States Agreement commits the three to assist each other in case of an external attack. Now, that could include an intervention like the one threatened by West African states against Niger's junta following its coup in July. Can unity save African nations? After placing their trust in Western alliances only to see them betrayed, African nations now join forces independently. Recently, three more countries have decided to form a new alliance, one that promises to be stronger than ECOWAS and other similar organizations. However, the question arises, will the West intervene to stop these alliances? Considering that such alliances could shift the balance of power, how might the West respond to this change? Let's find out. In a bold move towards sovereignty and regional stability, three West African nations have taken a historic step. On Saturday, July 6, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso convened for their first summit, officially establishing a new confederation, marking a significant shift in West Africa's geopolitical landscape. What motivated Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso to form the Confederation Sahel? Officials came together in Mali's capital to sign a deal that looks set to complicate efforts to restore democracy in Africa's Sahel region. Mali's foreign minister made clear what the pact entailed. Any attack on the sovereignty and territorial integrity of one or more of the signatories will be considered aggression against the others, and it will entail a duty of assistance and relief on the part of all signatories. The three former French colonies have each undergone military coups since 2020. Niger's was the most recent. Here, soldiers ousted the democratically elected president in July. While many Nigerians have rallied in support of the country's new military rulers, the junta has been condemned by the economic community of West African states. The motivation behind forming the Confederation Sahel lies in the desire for greater economic and political independence. The new confederation, officially named the Confederation of Sahel States AES, marks a departure from the economic community of West African states ECOWAS. The move signifies a unified stance against imperial and colonial influences, particularly from France and its Western allies. The leaders of these nations are determined to establish a sub-regional economic and political bloc that prioritizes self-sufficiency and regional integration. Historically, ECOWAS has been perceived by some as a tool manipulated by France and the European Union to maintain control over West African states. The imposition of sanctions on Niger following a coup exemplifies this control. These sanctions, including financial restrictions and trade halts, severely impacted Niger's economy and regional relations, prompting a reassessment of their alliances and prompting the move towards a confederation. The newly formed Confederation Sahel is not just a symbolic gesture, but a practical step towards a more unified and self-reliant region. By distancing themselves from ECOWAS, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso aim to break free from the economic and political shackles imposed by foreign powers. The Confederation is seen as a bold attempt to reclaim their sovereignty and chart a new course for their collective future. The first summit of the Confederation Sahel highlighted the commitment of these nations to greater integration and cooperation. The leaders announced a treaty that laid the foundation for this new alliance, emphasizing their shared goals and mutual support. This move is expected to have significant implications for the region, potentially inspiring other nations to follow suit. The decision to form the Confederation was not made lightly. It reflects a deep-seated dissatisfaction with the status quo and a recognition that true progress requires a fundamental change in approach. The leaders of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso understand that their future depends on their ability to work together and support each other in the face of common challenges. This confederation represents a collective effort to address these challenges and create a better future for their people. This pivotal shift sets the stage for the confederation's ambitious economic and political goals. So, how does the Confederation Sahel aim to transform the economic landscape of its member states? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, 
history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. A red carpet welcome for the Burkinabe leader as he joins his counterparts from Mali and Niger for a joint summit. It's the first time the three junta leaders are convening talks as an alliance of Sahel states, a new regional bloc aimed at reconciling a divided West Africa. On the agenda, the fight against terrorism and finding ways to boost cooperation. This is a first and historic summit of the Alliance of Sahel States. Today we are very proud to see an African summit, a summit where states have decided to pool their energy, to pool their forces, to create an alliance for development without any foreign stakeholders, without any counterparts from powers that are used to ruling over us. The Confederation Sahel is driven by a vision to develop an industrial base in each member country, moving away from the resource rental economic model that has long characterized many African states. This economic strategy is designed to create self-sufficiency and reduce dependence on foreign aid and investment. By fostering domestic industries and encouraging local entrepreneurship, the Confederation aims to build a robust economic foundation that can sustain long-term growth and development. One of the primary objectives of the Confederation is to formulate an economic plan that leverages the unique strengths and resources of each member state. This plan includes the establishment of joint ventures, the promotion of regional trade, and the development of infrastructure projects that can enhance connectivity and facilitate commerce. By pooling their resources and expertise, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso hope to create a synergistic effect that benefits all members. In addition to economic integration, the Confederation Sahel seeks to establish a cohesive political framework that supports their collective goals. This involves the harmonization of policies and regulations, the creation of joint institutions, and the implementation of governance structures that ensure transparency and accountability. The leaders of these nations recognize that political stability and good governance are essential for achieving sustainable economic development. The Confederation also aims to reduce the influence of foreign powers, particularly France, in their domestic affairs. By fostering a sense of unity and solidarity, the member states hope to strengthen their bargaining power on the international stage and negotiate more favorable terms in their dealings with other countries and organizations. This strategic realignment is seen as a way to assert their independence and protect their interests. Economic self-sufficiency is a cornerstone of the Confederation's strategy. The leaders are keenly aware that dependence on foreign aid and investment often comes with strings attached, limiting their ability to make autonomous decisions. By developing their industrial base and promoting local entrepreneurship, they aim to create a self-reliant economy that can withstand external pressures and provide for the needs of their people. The Confederation's economic plan also includes initiatives to improve education and training, ensuring that the workforce is equipped with the skills needed to support industrial growth. This focus on human capital development is critical for achieving long-term economic success. The leaders understand that a well-educated and skilled workforce is essential for driving innovation and maintaining competitiveness in the global market. As the Confederation focuses on economic and political integration, security remains a critical concern. What would you do if you and your friends weren't invited to a party? Probably host a better one, right? It seems three West African countries were thinking along these lines when they held a summit on Saturday. The leaders of Mali and Burkina Faso travelled to Niger's capital, Niamey for an official meeting of their very own regional alliance, the Alliance of Sahel States. These countries had touted this alliance a few months ago, but on Saturday, they officially signed a confederation treaty and took some shots at West Africa's biggest regional bloc, the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS. Our people have turned their backs irrevocably on ECOWAS. And now it's up to us to create the Alliance of Sahel States Confederation, an alternative to any artificial regional grouping. By so, what measures are being taken to address security challenges in the region? Security is a major concern for the member states of the Confederation Sahel, given the persistent threat of Islamist insurgencies and armed rebellions in the region. To address these challenges, 
the Confederation has devised a comprehensive counterinsurgency strategy aimed at eradicating extremist groups and restoring stability. A key component of this strategy is the establishment of a mutual defense pact, known as the Liptako Gorma Charter. This pact binds the member states to collaborate in preventing and responding to armed rebellions, as well as combating terrorism. By pooling their military resources and intelligence, the member states aim to create a unified and effective response to security threats. The Liptako Gorma Charter outlines specific measures for joint military operations, intelligence sharing, and coordinated efforts to secure borders and key infrastructure. These measures are designed to enhance the region's capacity to respond to security threats and ensure the safety of its citizens. The member states are committed to working together to eliminate the presence of extremist groups and create a secure environment conducive to development and prosperity. In addition to the Mutual Defense Pact, the Confederation has developed a counterinsurgency strategy that includes both military and non-military components. The military component involves direct action against extremist groups, including targeted operations to dismantle their networks and disrupt their activities. The non-military component focuses on addressing the root causes of insurgency, such as poverty, lack of education, and social marginalization. The Confederation recognizes that a purely military approach is not sufficient to achieve lasting security. As such, their strategy includes initiatives to promote economic development, improve education, and provide social services in areas affected by insurgency. By addressing the underlying issues that contribute to extremism, the member states hope to create conditions that discourage recruitment and support for extremist groups. The leaders of the Confederation Sahel have also emphasized the importance of regional and international cooperation in their counterinsurgency efforts. They are seeking to strengthen ties with neighboring countries and international partners to enhance their capabilities and share best practices. This collaborative approach is seen as essential for achieving sustainable security and stability in the region. As the Confederation works to address security challenges, it is also strategically realigning its international relationships. ECOWAS has existed since 1975. It was a grouping of 15 West African countries. Now, that number has gone down to 12. ECOWAS had planned to talk about bringing the Sahel states back into the fold, but the Sahel Alliance came as a shock. It is clear that disintegration will not only disrupt people's freedom of movement and settlement, but will also worsen insecurity in the region. The ECOWAS Commission President... How is the Confederation Sahel redefining its international relationships? The formation of the Confederation Sahel marks a significant shift in the region's international relationships, particularly with Western powers. Historically, France has maintained a strong military and political presence in West Africa, often seen as a vestige of its colonial past. However, the member states of the Confederation are now seeking to reduce this influence and assert their independence. A key aspect of this strategic realignment is the withdrawal of French military bases from the region. The member states have decided that maintaining a foreign military presence is inconsistent with their goals of sovereignty and self-reliance. This decision is also a response to growing anti-French sentiment among their populations, who view the continued presence of French troops as a form of neo-colonialism. In place of French military support, the Confederation is exploring new alliances and partnerships. One notable development is the increasing cooperation with Russia. The member states have engaged in discussions with Russian officials to explore opportunities for military and economic collaboration. This includes the potential for Russian military training and support, as well as investments in key sectors such as mining and energy. The Confederation's leaders are also seeking to strengthen ties with other African nations and regional organizations. They are actively engaging with the African Union and other sub-regional groups to promote solidarity and collective action. This includes efforts to build a united front on issues such as security, economic development, and political governance. The strategic realignment extends beyond military and political relationships. The member states are also rethinking their economic partnerships, seeking to diversify their sources of investment and trade. 
This includes exploring opportunities with emerging economies in Asia and Latin America, as well as deepening relationships with traditional partners in Africa and the Middle East. One of the goals of this realignment is to reduce dependence on Western aid and investment, which often comes with conditions that limit the autonomy of recipient countries. By diversifying their partnerships, the member states hope to create a more balanced and equitable economic environment. This approach is also seen as a way to mitigate the risks associated with over-reliance on a single source of support. While the strategic realignment presents new opportunities, it also comes with challenges. From the south, the governments of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso signed a military alliance to fight terrorism and organized crime in the common space of the African region. The defensive military alliance was established in Bamako, the capital of Mali, by the heads of the military forces of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traore, Mali Colonel Asimi Goita, and Niger General Tiani. According to the official statement, the three governments pledged to fight terrorism in all its manifestations as well as organized crime in the common space of the alliance. All this as part of the joint action plan to combat the actions of terrorist groups. What challenges does the Confederation Sahel face, and what are its prospects? The success of the Confederation Sahel will depend on its ability to navigate a range of challenges and effectively implement its ambitious agenda. One of the primary challenges is maintaining political stability within each member state. The region has a history of political turmoil, including coups and civil unrest, which could undermine the Confederation's efforts. To address this challenge, the member states are focusing on strengthening their governance structures and promoting political stability. This includes initiatives to enhance transparency, accountability, and the rule of law. The leaders recognize that political stability is essential for achieving their economic and security goals, and they are committed to creating an environment conducive to sustainable development. Another significant challenge is the economic disparity between the member states. While they share common goals, the economic conditions in each country vary widely. This disparity could create tensions and complicate efforts to achieve economic integration. To mitigate this risk, the Confederation is developing a framework for equitable resource distribution and joint investment in key projects. Security remains a persistent challenge, despite the Confederation's robust counterinsurgency strategy. The threat of extremist groups and armed rebellions continues to pose a risk to stability and development. The member states must remain vigilant and adaptable, continuously refining their strategies to address evolving security threats. The Confederation also faces external pressures from international actors who may view their independence and realignment efforts with suspicion or opposition. Navigating these external pressures will require careful diplomacy and a commitment to their shared vision. The leaders of the Confederation Sahel must balance their desire for autonomy with the need to maintain constructive relationships with key international partners. Looking to the future, the prospects for the Confederation Sahel are promising if they can effectively address these challenges. The Confederation has the potential to become a model for regional integration and self-sufficiency in Africa. By working together and leveraging their collective strengths, the member states can achieve greater economic and political stability, improving the lives of their citizens. The Confederation's success will also depend on its ability to inspire and mobilize support from its people. Public engagement and participation are crucial for building a sense of ownership and commitment to the Confederation's goals. The leaders must prioritize communication and outreach efforts to ensure that their citizens understand and support the vision of a unified and self-reliant Sahel. So, the formation of the Confederation Sahel represents a bold and historic step towards greater sovereignty and regional stability in West Africa. By uniting their efforts, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso aim to create a self-sufficient and secure region, free from the constraints of foreign influence. While the path ahead is fraught with challenges, the Confederation's commitment to economic development, political integration, and strategic realignment offers a promising blueprint for a brighter future. The success of this endeavor will hinge on the effective implementation of their strategies and the unwavering support of their people. Do you think this step will save African nations from exploitation? Will more nations join? What will happen if they do? Let us know in the comment section. Have African nations understood the importance of unity?
Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.